Continuing from the previous video, we also want to give our character finger bones. And now that we understand bone roll, we can align those fingers perfectly. Here is how. A very common mistake is to place the base of the finger where we see some folds on the hand. In reality, the base of the fingers is much deeper, it's easier to see on the knuckles of your own hand. The rest of the joints are much easier to determine, they are more or less where you see folds on the fingers. Placing the thumb can be challenging as well, it's best to look at anatomical diagrams to understand its placement. So our finger bones will look something like this. The hand also has palm bones. We'll skip them for now and we'll have a full hand setup in level 3 of the course. Let's go to edit mode, zoom in on the hand and I'll find the knuckles which is indicated by this geometry here and I'll shift and click and place my 3D cursor here and press shift A to create a new bone. If I scale it down now, it will scale from the middle. Let's set the pivot point to individual origins and scale down now and it will scale from the base of the bone. Here is my favorite way to align fingers. I'll switch snapping to volume and enable snapping. I'll grab the base of the bone and move it near the knuckle and it will snap inside the volume of the hand. Then I'll take this end of the bone and snap it near the end of the finger. In a second, we are going to subdivide this bone so that we get three finger bones. Next, I'll duplicate this bone and again, snap the base at the knuckle and the end of the bone at the end of the finger. Let's repeat this. And now for the thumb, I'll duplicate this bone, snap the base around here and the end of the bone at the end of the thumb. I'll disable snapping. And here is something that I think will help you understand bone roll even better. I'll go to pose mode and select all of these finger bones and the thumb bone. My orientation is set to local and pivot to individual origins, which means that each bone in my selection will rotate on its own local axis. So with the rotation gizmo, if I rotate on the Z axis, all bones will rotate in the same direction. But the natural rotation of the thumb is actually on the x-axis. Let's go to edit mode, press Ctrl R for the thumb and rotate it like this. Then again, select all of these finger bones and the thumb and rotate on the z-axis. Now all fingers rotate down, but the thumb rotates out. Let's go back to edit mode, press Ctrl R and then type 180. So that will flip the axis. And now let's do the rotation test again. And you'll see that the bones rotate down and the thumb rotates in, which is the most natural type of rotation. With this setup, go to edit mode, select all fingers in the thumb, right click, subdivide, and set number of cuts to two. Now we have three bones for each finger. And here is a nice good practice. Go to the front view, select all middle phalanges, and move them up just slightly. That creates a slight curvature, and that is the same as giving a little bit of an angle to the elbow or knee. It's just a nice best practice that is not so important now, but it will become more important as you build more complex rigs. Now for the thumb, I'm going to align my view based on the axis of rotation of the thumb and create the curvature of the thumb this way. And this, in my opinion, is perfect finger alignment. There is a slight natural curvature on the axis the fingers are supposed to rotate on, and they are completely straight from the top view because fingers are not supposed to bend sideways. Good job so far. We are going deep into these fundamentals that will make your work so much easier. We covered a lot of ground. Let's take a breather and do something simple. Let's name the bones. I'll name this bone hips, spine, chest, neck, head. Now we come to the symmetrical part of the rig, but let's say that I forgot to use the dot L suffix. So I'll just name this bone shoulder, then upper arm, and so on, without typing dot L. 
In a minute, I'm going to show you a cool trick to automatically add the .l suffix to all bones that need it. To add the .l suffix, I can select all bones on the left side in edit mode and go to armature, names, auto name left right. And now .l will be added to all of these bones. Technically, you can even select the middle bones. As long as they are right in the center, Blender will not give them a suffix. But if there is a tiny offset in the bones, they may get a suffix. So to keep it safe, select only bones that are clearly on one side of the rig. It's always nice to discover some of these cool tricks. And of course, let's not forget parenting. In pose mode, a lot of my bones are disconnected. So in edit mode, I'm going to select all of the base finger bones, shift select the hand, control P, keep offset. And also select the upper arm, shift select the shoulder, control P, keep offset. So parenting should be fairly familiar to you by now, but a question I received was, what is this space between the parented bones? Especially if you have experience with other software, you may expect all bones to be connected to each other, so the shoulder may look something like this. As far as parenting goes, there is no significant difference between having the bones connected or disconnected. It can make a difference when creating rig mechanisms. In general, try to keep your bones connected, but don't be afraid to use disconnected parenting if that helps you position and orient your bones better. For example, if I wanted to connect the upper arm and the shoulder, I would either have to move the pivot point of the upper arm, which I don't want to do, or tilt the shoulder bone, which makes the orientation of this bone and therefore the animation curves more complex. And if I wanted to connect the shoulder and the chest, the shoulder would have to rotate from the neck, which I absolutely don't want. Let's pair on the shoulder to the chest with keep offset, the thigh to the hips, and parenting should be down now. Next, we're going to set up IK for the leg, and it will be done exactly as in level one, but we'll go into more detail at each step. Knowing where to click is nice, but understanding why we do it is so much more useful. I'll go to edit mode, select the ankle, press E and then Y to, to extrude the bone on the Y axis. And now you should understand why we extrude it on the Y axis. We want to keep the bone straight so that it has nice orientations, which will help the animator. Next, I want to set up the IK. We set up constraints in pose mode. And so in the previous part, I showed you how to do it manually. There's actually a faster way. Select this bone, which will be the target and let's name it leg IK target dot L. Then shift select the shin, press Ctrl, Shift and C and choose inverse kinematics. So that is not only a nice shortcut, but because I selected the target first and then the shin, the constraint was applied to the shin and the target was set up automatically. We already know that we have to set chain length to two so that it only affects the shin and the thigh. And in level one, I told you to select the target in edit mode and press Alt P and clear the parent. We are not going to do it yet. Let's see why we're doing it. Because of the way I created this bone, it is parented and connected to the shin bone. If I go to pose mode and try to move it, I'm actually unable to do so. The bone rotates because it is unable to move and so Blender goes for rotation. I'll right click to cancel. So let's go to edit mode and press Alt P and instead of clear parent, let's disconnect the bone. This will keep the parenting, but it will allow me to move this bone freely. And this is how we can go from connected parenting to disconnected parenting. Back to pose mode. If I try to move this bone, you'll see that it kind of works, but our leg suddenly flips to random locations and then it goes back. This is called a dependency loop. The target bone is still parented to the shin. But because of the IK constraint, the shin's location is also affected by the target. So they both affect each other and Blender gets confused. That is why we have to go to edit mode, 
press Alt P and clear the parent of this bone completely. Now the only relationship is the shin is affected by the target bone. So we get predictable movement. Let's create a pole target as well. Select the knee, press E then Y to create a straight bone. Press Alt P, clear parent. G and Y to offset this pole and name it legpole.l. Go to pose mode. There is no automatic way to set the pole. So set pole target to the armature. And then for the bone, we're going to use a leg pole. If you're curious about this flipping of the IK chain, it has to do with bone orientations. The IK constraint tries to orient the x-axis of the bones towards the pole. That is why we use this pole angle to correct this. There is absolutely no harm in using it. Because I extruded my bone straight up, I just have to set the pole angle to exactly 90 degrees and it will be oriented perfectly. Here I disable and enable the IK constraint to check my pole angle. If your leg bones change a lot between the two states, you have to keep adjusting the pole angle. Next, we have the problem of the foot rotating when I move the body. Pause the video and try to figure out why that is happening. It is because the foot is parented to the shin. So when I move the body, the shin rotates and the foot rotates with it. That is why we go to edit mode, select the foot, shift select the target, press Ctrl P and parent with keep offset. Now the foot is parented to the target, so it will no longer rotate with the shin. And now we have this next problem that we can move the body and disconnect the foot from the shin. And we solve this by giving the foot a copy location constraint. Copy location also has target. So we can select the shin, shift select the foot, press Ctrl Shift C and choose copy location. That will add the constraint and set the target. Then just set the head tail slider to one so that the foot is attached to the end and not to the start of the shin bone. And we are almost done. One last thing that many people seem to be confused about, and that is the difference between parenting and setting constraints when we use shortcuts. When we parent, we select the child, or actually we can select multiple children. And then finally, we shift select the final bone, which will be the parent, and we press Ctrl P to finalize the parenting. So the final selected bone is the one that controls the other bones. With constraints, we first select the target and then we select the bone that will be constrained. So it can kind of seem like the selection order is inverted. It is best to just think about these two as completely different operations because they are. In parenting, the last selected bones becomes the parent. With constraints, the last selected bone gets the constraint and the other bone becomes the target for the constraint. Now I'll go to edit mode and let me parent the pole target to the IK target, Control P, keep offset. As I said in level one, this creates a simple and natural movement of the leg using only the IK target. Now I'm ready to symmetrize. I'll go to edit mode, select all bones, right click and choose symmetrize. In pose mode, I'm going to check if everything is all right and it seems to be. If your bones do not get symmetrized, here are the two top reasons. One, you did not properly name your symmetrical bones with the .l or .r suffix. So carefully check your bone names. And number two, if we go to object mode, the pivot point of my rig is exactly in the middle of the world. If you follow this tutorial exactly, so you set your cursor to the world origin and then shift A and created your armature, your armature will start exactly in the center of the world and you will not have any symmetrization problems. So start with your armature in the center of the world and then do not move it in object mode. Go to edit mode and start creating your armature this way. I'll delete this. Let's go to pose mode. And I want to set all of these target bones as non-deforming which you may remember from level one. All of my other bones are meant to deform the character, but these four are just controls. So go to the bone tab, and instead of disabling them one by one, 
you can alt and click on the deform option and all bones will be set up. If alt and click doesn't work for you, you can do this instead. Just disable the deform without holding alt, then right click on it and choose copy to select it. This will also disable the deform option on all selected bones. Now I can select all meshes, shift select my rig so that it is active and then press Ctrl P and automatic weights. And now I'll be able to go to pose mode and deform my rig. And with that, our basic setup is done. We took our time and learned a lot about bone positions and bone roll. This is knowledge that will definitely pay off. So with this deeper understanding of fundamentals, we will move on to the next two videos in which we will set up a couple of cool rig mechanisms. Automatic twist bones, improved hips control and a foot mechanism.